So here we're going to do a cliff problem from unit two. Uh, we have a bicycle that is riding off a cliff here. This guy is uh, going five meters per second in the horizontal direction. So we would call that velocity in the x direction, five meters per second. Uh, let's say that this guy is in the air. He falls off this cliff and he's in the air for uh, three seconds. All right. A couple of questions we could ask about this. We want to know what is dy going to be, meaning uh, how high was the cliff, or how far did he fall, same cliff, uh, same question. What is this distance, d in the y direction? Uh, we also want to know um, how far out did he land, how far out, uh, meaning distance in the x direction, that's what this would be. And then the third question we could ask is, um, why is this guy such an idiot for riding off a cliff? No, it's actually what is his velocity um, going to be in the vertical direction? Okay, what's the velocity in the vertical direction? So, three questions. First, we'll tackle how high. Uh, how high is the cliff? Well, um, we know that he's in the air for three seconds, and if we want to determine how high the cliff is or how far he fell, it's the same question. So D equals one half G T squared, because if you all you have to know is how long someone was in the air, or something was in the air, uh, and how long it took to hit the ground if it fell from its highest point, um, in order to figure that out. So one half times 10 meters per second squared times uh, 3 squared, which is 9, is uh, 4 and a half times 9, what is that, uh, 45. 45 meters, that's how high um, this cliff is. All right, so dy equals 45 meters, I think. Okay, and then how far out did he land? Well, uh, the question here becomes, is his horizontal velocity changing at all while he's falling? Uh, and the answer to that is no, it's not like his vertical velocity where you have to have g in there because he's accelerating. He's not accelerating in a horizontal direction. As long as he's in the air, every second he's in the air, he's going to move another five meters out. So if he moves five meters horizontally every second and he's in the air for three seconds, then how far out will he uh, land? And the answer to that, you're going to use distance equals velocity times time. Okay, again, there's no G or no A necessary here because it's a constant velocity. As long as he's in the air, he's going to travel that way at the same rate. So uh, 5 meters per second times uh, 3 seconds equals 15 meters. And that's your distance in the X direction. He's going to land 15 meters out. Now, uh, what's his velo uh, velocity going to be in the vertical direction? Well. That means how fast will he be going in this direction right here right before he hits the ground. And again, all we need here is the time and we need to know what planet we're on and we're on Earth, as you know. So uh, V equals GT. Again, we have to have G because it's vertical and anytime something has vertical velocity, it's going to be accelerating if it's a free fall thing and that's what this is. So here we need a negative 10 meters per second squared for G. T is uh, three, me, uh, 3 seconds, so the vertical velocity is negative 30 meters per second. There's a cliff problem. This could go also not just for a bike riding off a cliff. We could kick a ball off a roof. We could have a plane drop a package. We've done those types of problems. This is a cliff problem. Um, fairly tricky, but if you can separate Vx and Dx, knowing that you're going to use this equation, you'll be in good shape. If you can separate dy and vy knowing that you're going to use this equation that has to have a g in it because there's acceleration due to gravity there. All right, then you'll be okay if you can separate those. Cliff problems, good luck.